We thought we knew a lot about the Zonai. We knew nothing. Today we'll be going over all of the lore we currently have about the Zonai and their history and we'll attempt to roughly date all of the artifacts and architecture left from their culture. There will be no wild speculation involved and I'll do my best to keep guessing in general to a minimum. As you'll soon see, there is a lot we can piece out on the matter without any leaps in logic. If you find this subject matter interesting, subscribe to the channel! It will help to keep our research effort going! So, grab your cup of chocolate or other beverage of your choice, get comfy, and let us begin. Oh, and expect spoilers ahead. First of all, if we want to create a rough timeline of Zonai history, we need at least one point of reference. Luckily, the reports of the Zonai survey team, along with accounts forwarded to them by Link and Zelda, give us much more than that. So, with all that in mind, that is what our starting timeline looks like. It starts with the founding of Hyrule by Rauru and Sonia, the imprisoning war takes place an unknown number of years later, and then the history continues for at least another 10,000 years, to probably much more than that. Up until present day. Zelda arrives in the past at some point between the founding and the war, though it surprisingly isn't that relevant to our discussion, so I've left that out for the sake of clarity. We do not have specific dates for any of these events, so I'm going to use these three points as a reference for everything going forward. Oh, and an important note. I am aware that many historians treat old myths such as that of the Skyward Sword as accurate accounts of ancient events. In my humble opinion, they are just legends, and while they can inform us about the past and provide context, they should be treated with extreme caution. Thus, I won't be relying on them for this analysis. Got that? Good. Now, Hylia protect us? Let us begin with what we thought we knew. Barbarian armor is said to have been worn by an ancient warlike tribe that used to live in Faron. It is a set of bone and leather armor that fits the body type of an average Hylian. Like... I want you to consider this for a moment. Like, look at Raru. Look at him. Look at those tiny short baby legs. At this absurdly long torso. At his head. Do we seriously still think that this set of armor would fit a Zonai? No! Therefore, we can safely conclude that the ancient warlike tribe was either early Hylians or another race completely, which we don't know about, but which shares the Hylian body type. Out of these two options, I find ancient early Hylians to be more likely. In hindsight, we should have known. We really should have known earlier. There is absolutely no way that people who built all of this went to war dressed like this. Whoever those ancient barbarians were, they more than likely lived out of tents. So, that leaves us with one last question. Roughly from which point on the timeline does that thing originate from? To be completely honest, assuming that this is of early Hylian origin, I see only two options. Either it comes from the Faron tribe of Hylians, who lived within Hyrule before the arrival of Zonai and the founding of the kingdom, or Hylians experienced a massive cultural regression after the last Zonai were lost to the imprisoning war. Personally, I'm leaning towards the former. Now, as for the Zonai ruins, the complex around Dracozu River shares its architectural style with Typhlo ruins, Lome labyrinths, and a selection of other, smaller ruins, found in the various corners of Hyrule and in a bunch of shallow surface caves. These are the ruins we knew about, the ones heavily featuring dragon, owl and boar motifs, representing the mystical Triforce, built of dark stone, 
weathered and rugged. It is notably different from the architecture that can now be found in the sky, which is heavily associated with Raruira, according to all accounts, and it is different still from architecture found at Hyrule's Forgotten Foundation and in the cliff face hidden behind the Forgotten Temple. The first and obvious idea many of our best researchers jump to is that Zonai probably originated from Faron, as we previously thought, and their architecture has simply evolved from what we find in Faron into the pristine white angular shapes of the Raru era. That notion is wrong, however, and it is debunked by rather impressive evidence against it. Firstly, that presumed Zonai architecture has been damaged during the upheaval, rather badly in some places. This reveals that at least a portion of ruins along Dracozo River and the ruins in Tobias Hollow were actually built over pre-existing Zonai architecture, one which matches its characteristics with buildings of the Raru era. If you pay close attention, the dragon statues along the Dracozo River a staple of the so-called Zonai ruins are actually shells, covering up white and angular dragon statues with gold engravings. Portions of the much more rounded designs broke off on the faces of the statues, revealing long-forgotten features beneath. The lightning rod horns are of note as well. They were clearly a part of a mechanism and meant to slide out from the inside of the statue when triggered. Because the original statues were fully covered, however, instead of gracefully extending out, those lightning rods had to force their way out through solid stone. You can even see exactly where the new shell ends. Large sections of these specific statues were hidden underground, with no easy access for people who built over them, so the new structure ends at what used to be ground level. In Tobias Hollow there is a similar thing happening. Portions of the old architecture are peeking out from under the new, and the pathway down into the chasm literally opens into the elevator built in the Raru era style, rather than the one found just outside. More importantly though, and this really is a nail to the coffin for this case, in Typhlo ruins a plaque was discovered, crediting their creation to ancient Hyrulians as a memorial for King Zoraru's sacrifice in the events of imprisoning war, which in terms of the timeline, puts all of those ruins way after Raru was already gone, no questions asked. Does that mean that this architecture is Hylian in origin then? Just like Barbarian armor? Well, not so fast. There is a lot that could still be said on the matter, but first, allow me to finish with all the architecture stuff because what we've just talked about, well, that's just the start. As mentioned before, there are two other types of architecture which are clearly Zonai in origin. There are the white and angular structures of the Rauru era and structures made out of dark, rough brick, still featuring white angular column designs with Zonai script on their walls. Let's begin with the former. These structures are, like I said, white and angular, with columns wider towards the tip and narrow at the bottom. Buildings feature minimalist decorations, taking the form of gold engraved writing, ring patterns and dragon statues, very often laying down and merged with other parts of the structure, such as stairs, and occasionally the sun designs. There is a noticeable lack of boar and owl imagery in all places except one. Spirit Temple replaces dragon sculptures with owls. The exact reason for this is unknown. It is notable, however, that the temple has been used by Mineru as the place to store her giant constructs and safeguard her secret stone. The mask Mineru is seen carrying with her one which later became the face of her construct body, is in the shape of an owl. 
This seems to point to the structure either being built on Miner's orders or taken over by her and then decorated with the animal she was associated with, rather than usual dragons. Along with the spirit temple, other white Zonai structures are commonly found all across the depths. They are the various small and large mines, along with observation decks, colosseums, footpaths and Zonai part depots scattered all over. These buildings are overwhelmingly utilitarian architecture, meant for mining, forging and transporting Zonite from underground veins to one of the tunnels leading back to the surface, possibly the natural hole found within the current day Yiga hideout, or to much more approachable inclined Tobias Hollow Chasm. Working our way up, the white Zonai architecture is also found within shallow caves of the surface, most commonly in Feron and surrounding regions, taking the form of small excavation sites. It is unclear what Zonai were excavating for. Perhaps they were looking for veins of Zonite they eventually located far lower down, in the depths. Regardless, the sites are built out with slates of white stone, adorned with circular patterns, and Zonitech is commonly found stored within. In addition to those sites, there are also small ritual altars, hidden behind the statues of the Drakozu River, used in some sort of an ancient ceremony, partaking in which allowed Link to dispel the storm plaguing the Dragonhead Island above. As we discussed prior, there also used to be a lot of white Zonai structures on the ground level, however, they were either built over later in the timeline, or they were taken to the sky. The Sky Lore tablets, which I happened to translate recently, specifically mention the creation of Great Sky Island, one which raised the Temple of Time and buildings surrounding it into the sky, and the creation of flower-shaped sky islands with the tablets on them. While not directly mentioned in those texts, many of the other sky islands seem to have been raised up at around the same time period, with a few exceptions we'll talk about later. They all feature the same white architecture, and they seem to most commonly be residential buildings, small storehouses and ponds. Unfortunately, the positions of Sky Islands only give us limited information on the old ground locations of these structures. We know that the Great Sky Island used to be where the current day Great Plateau is now. However, the sky landmass seems to have shifted over the years. It is now floating over the forests and the rivers to the east of its own location, and, based on the account Zonai survey team received from Princess Zelda, the observation deck found behind the Temple of Time used to face south-southeast as opposed to directly north as it is now, meaning that all the islands are subject to forces of the wind, not only freely pushing them around, but also rotating them as they go. While Great Sky Island didn't move too far away from its original spot, it is also the biggest and the heaviest island complex. We can readily assume that all of the smaller islands scattered everywhere across the sky have changed their positions much more rapidly than that. Additionally, the Sky Lore tablets offer one last bit of lore regarding the creation of Sky Islands. They weren't necessarily all created at the exact same time. One of the tablets directly describes Mineru raising the flower islands into the sky. It is immediately followed by a tablet explicitly stating that all of the royal family members whom the author of the writings knew are now gone, and that they are carving this last text alone. Both it and the first tablet found seem to have been two halves of the same entry, as they both read like a summary of the entirety of the diary, and both mention there being 13 Nord tablets specifically, meaning that Mineru more than likely only sent 11 of them up into the sky before leaving her body behind and the additional two have been sent up either by sages or by constructs who remained. Speaking of constructs, they are absolutely everywhere both on sky islands and in the depths. 
A massive amount of servant constructs were created to aid people in everyday tasks, and even more of soldier constructs were built specifically as defenders of lands in the sky. Chamberlain's writings provide us with some additional context about the constructs. According to this entry, they were a novel idea, thought up and realized by Mineru, primarily in order to facilitate the use of her spirit powers. While other Zonitech surely existed beforehand, the constructs were very specifically created by Mineru, who then continued to iterate on their designs throughout her life. Well, that was a lot. Thankfully, we have the timeline to save us. So, as we've just discussed, the Sky Islands themselves have been created sometime after the imprisoning war and over a period of time, or at least a majority of them were. There are a few notable exceptions to this, the Lomay Labyrinths. These structures have sky and depth portions in addition to the buildings found on the surface. This means that while the majority of the islands were made directly after sealing of Ganondorf, the knowledge about them and the technology to create them remained for quite a good while after, culminating in the creation of Sky Labyrinths. The Temple of Time itself and settlement around it was likely built somewhere around the time of Hyrule's founding, and the White Zonai style held on for the entirety of Raur's reign and perhaps even some more time after his sacrifice. The Spirit Temple was likely either built or renovated as a construct storage facility during Raurus' reign, along with the construct factory built nearby. They are both tied to Minerus' experiments with robotics, which took place before and after Zelda's arrival in the past. As for the mining facilities and the observation decks in the depths, they were an operation on a massive scale something that has to have been developed over an extended period of time and would require absurd amounts of manpower to function. Meaning, it couldn't possibly have all been built just during the reign of Rauru. I also find it unlikely that the mining operation only started after the imprisoning war. That period was the twilight of this type of architecture. If the mining operation was being expanded upon during the transitory period of the building styles, we would see that reflected in the depths, but we don't. Additionally, both the presence of constructs and the sheer amount of them that was built over the duration of Raurus' reign suggest that Zonite mining was already operating in force, and there was enough of it to spare for building and powering these robots in addition to any other technology Raro and Mineru inherited from their Zonai ancestors. All of which would mean that the mining operation likely began well before the founding of Hyrule and continued on through Raro's reign, only to end well after the imprisoning war. At that point, no new mines were being created anymore though it is likely that existing ones still remained in use for quite a while after that. That leaves us with only two more Zonai ruins, both in the third architectural style. They are the Behind the Forgotten Temple, which personally I like to call the Forgotten Fortress, and Hyrule's Foundation. As explained prior, both of these structures are notably different from any other ancient architecture found within the vast expanse of Hyrule, this style uses elements typical of Raru era for its columns, however the walls themselves are made of solid brick, rough and textured, different to the snowy white known from the Sky Temple of Time. And speaking of the Temple of Time, now we also know from Zelda that there used to be one more structure in this third style, a castle, located on the modern day Great Plateau. This structure housed the royal family and was the origin point of Ganondorf's conquest of Hyrule. Unfortunately, it did not survive to modern times, likely having been destroyed by marching forces of the Demon King. The Forgotten Fortress has been carved within a face of the cliff, with only one massive door leading inside. In the first chamber, there is a huge pedestal shaped like a lotus flower, which has been used to hold Zonai secret stones. That pedestal is surrounded by dragon sculptures, placed 
pretty much on every surface available. Out in the back, a large map of Hyro has been built, placed down in a pit for easy viewing from platforms above. This layout suggests that this section has been used as a war room. The portion in front of the Forgotten Fortress, the Forgotten Temple, is much younger and hasn't been built by Zonai, but rather by ancient Hylians. See how different the stonework is by the gate? What is notable, however, is that the Forgotten Temple seems to have been built over a pre-existing portion of the Forgotten Fortress. We know from Zelda that the fortress used to extend far in front of the secret stone chamber, which, logically, it makes sense. You don't put a treasury right behind the front gate to the building. Hyrule's foundation seems to have been either another bigger fortress or even a city. It is absolutely sprawling, though unfortunately large portions of the building have become inaccessible due to structural damage. We do know, however, that it used to have a multi-floor layout with a central vertical stairway, now in the state of utter decay, leading down into large halls. Within these halls, stele with Zonai writing, dragon sculptures and large depictions of Zonai themselves can be found. These halls led into a huge chamber with spikes of unknown purpose jutting out from the ceiling. This is where the final battle of the sages against the Gerudo king took place. Both of these structures are more than likely to have been built by the original Zonai. They share elements with the white Zonai architecture, suggesting that the white style was derived from this one, and we know from Zelda's account that both the Forgotten Fortress and Hyrule's foundation predate the Imprisoning War. And before any of you jump at me, yes, I am aware of the anachronistic reliefs, murals and the geoglyphs placed around on the map in the War Room. Both of these have to have been created after the events of the Imprisoning War. The reliefs within Hyrule's foundation to commemorate all of the recent history and the reproductions of geoglyphs, placed around on the map and carved within the walls surrounding it in the Forgotten Fortress. I'd even go as far as to say that the reliefs from Hyrule's foundation predate the geoglyph reproductions by quite a significant margin. The reliefs seem to have been placed within the halls shortly after the events of the war, while all of the details were still relatively fresh in the mind of the artist, given how accurate it is. Meanwhile, creation of geoglyphs themselves must have been a rather time-consuming process. According to Impa, these drawings have been made by people who saw the memories contained within Tears of the Light Dragon, meaning that those tears must have been found and viewed first, and then followed up with the creation of large markings on the ground around them. A process like that, a tear at a time, has to have taken many years to complete before it was even possible to create a precise map and murals of these geoglyphs within the Forgotten Fortress's war room. As impressive as the newly discovered Zonai architecture is, it is not the only remaining artifact which informs us about Zonai history. Surviving pieces of clothing from the era, recovered by Link, give us even more insight into the culture and the course of Zonai history. Starting with the archaic set, these pieces of clothing have been made for Hylians of Raru era. They are simple tunics with laced shoes. The over-shoulder portion came in all sorts of different colors, however it was always rimmed with a Triforce motif. Though, believe it or not, it is not the earliest appearance of said motif within remains of Zonai culture. Given the reports of Princess Zelda, we can assuredly say that the archaic wear has been a common Hylian wardrobe at the time of Raru's reign, and possibly even sometime before it. Given that this green piece has been recovered on a great sky island, it also suggests that this kind of clothing was in fashion well after the imprisoning war, and that Hylian activity around the Temple of Time did not cease with its rising to the sky. But uh, turning our attention back to the issue of Triforce depictions, the earliest ones come from the free ritual sets. 
They are all found on the surface and feature prominent golden Triforce rimmings, in addition to a zonite brood in the shape of a dragon's head, and very prominent horned headdress, made to match the horns of the respective zonite dragon. We know that these clothes were used primarily in religious rituals, and given all the dragon imagery, these rituals were likely centered around the worship and celebration of the three Zonai dragons, likely well before the process of draconification became forbidden. We know this because Raro himself is seen wearing a charged set, suggesting he actually used to fulfill the role of a priest before becoming king. However, Raro's set is different to the one Link found during his search for the princess. Instead of a dragon-shaped brute, Raro's set features an owl, and the dragon horn was removed from the headdress. The ritual clothing has been altered to suit the new belief that a person turning into a dragon should not be celebrated. This could also help explain the conundrum we had earlier about the subject of the spirit temple. Owl seems to be the new animal, adopted as a symbol of worship by the royal family and associated with the royal family, thus it was included in the spirit temple as the guardian statue rather than the usual dragon. Regardless, the location in which Link discovered these sets corroborates that, indeed, this clothing has no longer been in use when the Sky Islands were being created. If it was, then these sets would likely have been taken into the skies along with the rest of Zonai culture and tradition at large. The lack of any owl and boar symbolism on these clothes also matches our earlier discoveries about these two animals being introduced as symbols only later on in Zonai history. Originally, dragons were the primary object of worship. One last piece of information these sets provide us with is also that ancient Hylians have been allowed by the Zonai to hold positions of high esteem within their religious organization. Otherwise, no version of this clothing sewn to fit a Hylian would exist, because, as we've discussed when looking at barbarian armor earlier, Zonai have a very different body type and as such, their clothing has to fit different proportions than one made for Hellions. All of this puts these sets at way before founding of Hyrule and around the time Zonai dragons were created. This type of clothing would remain in use for a long time after, up until the end of Araru's reign, albeit with some modifications and adjustments to changing beliefs along the way. The Miner set is found within Zonite Mines in the depths. It features lotus-shaped lamps, common within Zonite architecture, the angular design for the mask, known from statues of white Zonite style, and minor use of spirals. The mask itself has likely been worn to prevent inhalation of dust created during mining and possibly harmful Zonai particles. Again, the miner set has been made with Hellions in mind, clearly suggesting that the mines in the depths have been operated by Hellion subjects of the Zonai rather than Zonai themselves. The heavy use of chains and large lamps at the ankles especially combined with the observation decks and colosseums being a thing that exists in the depths, also brings into question the nature of the Hylian work conducted here. Were the Hylians working the mines of their own volition or have they been forced to? We don't have a clear answer to this question, we can only speculate. However, we do have a rather strong placement for the miner set on the timeline. It was in use from around the beginning of the large-scale mining operation up until sometime during Raru's reign, when the live miners could have been replaced by minerous constructs, which was both the more optimal and more humane option. Now, on to the last three sets and oh boy, this is where the story becomes juicy. Let's start with the Zonite set. It is a set made of Zonite and white fabric with golden markings. 
It is the same kind of fabric as the one given by the construct atop the Temple of Time upon completion of the flight ceremony, used to commemorate the history of the Sky Island's creation. This type of fabric was also used in the Sage outfits, but notably, not in any of the royal family's outfits. This suggests that while the fabric has been in use from at least the founding of Hyrule, it wasn't seen as befitting of Hyrule's royalty and only started seeing wider use years after the imprisoning war. The headpiece is also notable as it is very similar to masks used by the royal guards of Raru, though green and with a much smaller crest. One is clearly derived from the other. In addition, Zonite's set is found within the various Sky Islands and features, very prominently might I add, the three animal motifs, the dragon, the owl and the boar. They are much larger than the brooches of the ritual set, much more boldly displayed, and they match the symbolism of late Zonai architecture we discussed at the start of the video. This places the set squarely during the late Zonai architecture and, directly, in our face, confirms that even after the Sky Islands have been risen, there still was Hylian activity on them. People lived in the old Zonai structures for quite some time after being taken to the sky, and it is clear that living in the sky has become a part of their culture. It is very clearly evidenced by the glide set, acquired upon completion of a skydiving challenge explained to be a coming of age ceremony for the young Zonai. This phrasing led some of our researchers to assume that skydiving islands predate the rest of Zonai architecture, however, this is absolutely not the case. The skydiving ceremony has likely been a form of a journey. A young Zonai would embark from their home, probably located either on Great Sky Island or on Thunderhead Isles, and cross the skies of Hyrule to reach each of the three islands and perform the ceremony. What is notable, however, is that Link could fit in this set of armor, suggesting that some Hylians also could partake, and perhaps were even classified as Zonai for a long time after Raru's reign due to their lineage tracing back all the way to the royal family. And the link, pun intended, connecting the glide set with the original royal family is the one you've all been waiting for, the ancient heroes aspect. This is more than a set, this is a manifestation of a spirit. It allows us to glean directly into the ancient past of Hyrule, and boy, oh boy does it give us a lot. First of all, this hero is one from the old tapestry, depicting the conflict with Calamity Ganon 10,000 years ago, which immediately tells us that the new Zonai era has functioned at least up until that point in time. It also provides us with a proof of existence of a whole other race we haven't really considered up until this point, the Zonai descendant race. These would be people whose origin traced back directly to Raro and Mineru. As a result of their mixing with Hylians, the traits of Zonai descendants have changed. And as some would likely decide to eventually start marrying within their own race, some traits which weren't present in the original Zonai became strengthened. As such, descendant Zonai are still green, but much more mammalian than draconic. Gone are the scales and huge ears, instead this new species features ears much more resembling those of Hylians. The huge white manes of the original Zonai have also been replaced with colorful hair, much closer to the Hylians in texture. Large noses became smaller, though the face remained extended. The bodily proportions, while still not entirely Hylian, match the Hylians much closer now, with the primary difference being the dog-like legs and the tail. Ancient hero aspect shares a connection with the two sets we've previously discussed that is quite easy to miss in all of its green red-headed glory. The ancient hero, 
War as the Night Armor. Exactly the same as the Hylian variant, just made to match his weirdo legs. He also wore a skin paint or a tattoo, which wouldn't be anything too unusual until you look closely at the glide set and notice that it has the same ritual markings imprinted upon the cloth. So, it seems I have made an error. While I was recording the footage for this video, I noticed that these patterns are not the same at all. It seems I have imagined it. Meh. They kinda look close. Kinda. And the historical placement still makes sense to me, albeit it is less secure now with the major piece of evidence being gone and all. Dunno, you be the judge. With that out of the way, I'll let the past me continue with the thing. These connections strongly suggest that both the Zonite and Glide sets have been used at roughly the same time, and the Zonai constructs referred to were people like this guy, who still looked much more like an original Zonai than a Hellion, even though technically they no longer were the exact same species as the Zonai of old. And for all Zonai descendants who decided to continue marrying Hellions? Well, in time they would stop resembling the ancient hero, but as I've said prior, likely could still be considered to be Zonai due to their blood connection. However, evidently, Zonai descendants no longer were inventors. That job fell down upon the Shika, who, using the remains of the civilization long past, created their own version of technology. The divine beasts, the guardians, the shrines, all of that. They had the shrines of light, the constructs and the helms of ancient sages for inspiration. Which would also mean that the travel gates are, and always have been, a paradox technology. Great! Now all we can do is wait for the fabric of space-time to collapse unto itself. Thank you, Zelda! On a more serious note though, shrines of light and roots connected to them have a bit of a backstory. According to one of the diary entries found within the sky, Sonia claims that the shrines are the creation of combined might of her and Raru, no, mostly Raru, and they were made in order to seal away monsters plaguing the early Hyrule. Now, if we assume that the Chamberlain's retelling of the story she heard from Queen Sonia is accurate, the phrasing here is very important. From early days since Hyrule's founding. This means that monsters only started appearing AFTER the Hyrule was founded. They aren't a natural occurrence and never were. That's a whole other can of worms and a discussion for another day, however, this detail puts the creation of monsters early on in Hyrule's history and the creation of shrines follows shortly after. Light roots were created together with the shrines, calling into question the exact method of sealing used. The green swirls as well, very reminiscent of self-sacrificial seal placed upon Gandorf by Raru. But again, this is a discussion outside of the scope of the current video. Sticking to other Michelinian Zonai relics, secret stones! Their origin is largely unknown, though it is clear that Zonai had them already and brought them into Hyrule when they descended from the heavens. That is what Link was told by Mineru, and I am inclined to believe in her knowledge of her own history. At the beginning of the timeline they go. Speaking of Zonai arrival, they have been said to have descended from the heavens, which is why early Hylians assumed that they must have been either gods or, at the very least, descendants of them. According with all our findings up until this point, there were no sky islands for the Zonai to have descended from leading me to the conclusion that they must have arrived from outside the Hyrule's borders and they likely have done so via flying machines, constructed using the parts we now know as the Zonai technology. What brought the Zonai to this land in the first place, however, remains a mystery. 
There's also this eye symbol, which appears on various pieces of clothing, the old Zonai shields and Sonia's tattoos. It seems to have been around for much of Zonai history, and it isn't unlikely that it has been inherited by the Shika, giving the rise to the Shika eye. The symbol itself has likely originated from the third eye, present on the foreheads of Zonai, or at least the two Link and Zelda have met on their travels. The eye remains closed for the majority of the time and, according to Zelda, seems to have been an organ used to strengthen the flow of magical energy of the individual, opening whenever the Zonai would cast a spell. Perhaps Zonai believed that their third eye was a gift bestowed upon them by the gods, However, at this point in time, it is difficult to say for certain. Also, given that we have thoroughly failed to find most of these Zonai relics up until the upheaval came and wrecked the landscape we all know and love, and that both the Forgotten Temple and the Zonai descendant ruins in Tobio and around Drakozu have been built over the old architecture, it seems extremely likely that, at some point in history, it was decided that the knowledge of the past must be erased from the minds of future generations. A grand erasure, if you will. The exact reasons for this decision remain unknown, however, an event like that would explain why the geoglyphs, the sky islands and the light dragon were all obscured by magic up until very recently. If I had to make a guess, I'd say the Grand Erasure happened some time after the Great Calamity from 10,000 years ago, and it was caused by an attempt to disrupt Rahoru's seal or the restful slumber of the Master Sword atop Light Dragon's head. Whatever the triggering event may have been, it resulted in a drastic action. All of the old Zonai structures, still remaining on the surface, were either built over or cut off. The geoglyphs, along with the dragon tears, were completely obscured with illusory magic, and the sky islands hidden, with a similar spell, though cast on a much larger scale. As a result, Hylian and Zonai activity on the sky islands ceased. And I believe that to be the last major piece of Zonai lore we currently have access to. Things might change as new discoveries are being made, however, this is what our Zonai history timeline looks like as of right now. Secret stones are created in the ancient, untold past. The barbaric tribe of Hellions lives within the jungles of Faron. Zonai arrive in Hyrule on flying machines, created with the use of Zonai technology. An era which I call the Age of Old Zonai begins. Zonai are active in Hyrule, building strongholds in various corners of the land. Zonai are active around the springs. Their worship leads to the creation of three Zonai dragons. Symbol now known as the Triforce starts appearing, it is used prominently within ceremonial robes, made for dragon worship. Architecture evolves, white Zonai style becomes prominent. Zonite is found in the depths, mining operation begins. Zonite is mined by Hylians, dressed in a set of clothing, with a multitude of lamps attached for better visibility. Draconification becomes forbidden. Zonai fade out until only two remain. Raru, a priest, founds the Kingdom of Hyrule together with a fellow priestess. Monsters begin appearing. The problem is soon quelled with sealing light magic. Shrines of light and light roots are created as a result. Temple of Time is constructed. The kingdom prospers. Mineru invents constructs. Spirit Temple and Construct Factory are created. The imprisoning war takes place. Last of the Zonai are lost and the Age of Old Zonai ends. 
First sky islands are created. The age of the sky begins. The reliefs in Hyrule's foundation are created. Mining operations are continued, though the activity in the depths lessens. Zonai Descendant Race starts forming. Geoglyphs are created. Glyphs are marked on the map in the Forgotten Fortress. White Zonai style of architecture slowly fades out. Zonai Descendants live both in the old structures in the sky and on the surface. New Zonai structures are created. Shika create their technology based on the remains of the Zonai technology. The calamity 10,000 years ago takes place. Zonai descendants fade out. The Zonai history at large is hidden and eventually forgotten. I believe this timeline to be an order of events as accurate as we can get with no longer having access to Minero and records from her time. It is obviously subject to change with new discoveries and it leaves a lot of space open for speculation about the exact events which took place in the long zone history. However, this analysis is already running long, so I'll allow myself to save that for another day. Thank you for listening and good night.